Recently, I spoke with Dr. Robert Reynolds of the Reynolds Clinic. The focus of the conversation, behavioral problems in children and the warning signs. Most parents hope that once their children pass, the terrible twos, behavioral problems will be over. But nearly 10% of school-aged children develop a pattern of disobedient and hostile behavior toward adults called oppositional defiant disorder, or ODD. Here to help parents identify the warning signs are Dr. Robert Reynolds, the clinical director at the Reynolds Clinic in Middletown, along with Suzanne Clemente, a parent of a son with ODD. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having us. Okay, how serious of a problem is ODD, Dr. Reynolds? Well, it's a lot more serious than people realize. Uh, about, as you were saying, about 10% of kids have ODD. But oftentimes parents don't realize that that's what they're dealing with. It's common, for example, for parents to come to my clinic because they think their child has ADHD. And it becomes apparent during the clinical interview that he may have ADHD, but by far the bigger problem are the behaviors that go along with oppositional defiant disorder. All right, Suzanne, you're dealing with a son who was, who was what, being aggressive at home? Or yes, what's going on? Um, we weren't getting along, if you want to call it that. We were arguing with each other, at screaming at the top of our lungs at some, t at some point, and I knew something was wrong. Did I you knew. have any idea that it was ODD? What were you thinking it was? No, um, I, ha I kind of thought it was ADHD, and I thought maybe I was doing something wrong, that I wasn't being the best parent that I could be and I just was kind of stuck. I didn't know what else to do. So you found Dr. Yes. Reynolds. Yes. Let's talk about the signs of ODD. What are they? Well, I think what Suzanne just described is one of the most important ones. These are severe temper tantrums. I'm not just talking about a child who gets upset from time to time. These are bona fide, full-blown meltdowns that can go on for 20 minutes, a half an hour, an hour, and it's really at a very high volume. But that's not the only issue. That's not the only symptom. They oftentimes argue to, with adults, particularly their parents, about the rules, about what they're being asked to do. They'll fight over the least little things. In addition, they are very, very non-compliant. They also almost inevitably fail to take responsibility for something that they have obviously done wrong. They will blame everybody else except to take responsibility. These are the kind of things that drive parents crazy. Absolutely. And Suzanne, what did you see? What was, what was he arguing about? Oh, everything. <laughs> everything. Um, yep. If he has two pairs of shoes in the mudroom, I tell him to put on a certain pair. It'll be a 20-minute argument about why he can't wear the other pair. And it's just because I saw that pair first, but he can, will continue to argue and argue about and, and what pencil he can use for homework. How old was he when this all started? Um, about five and a half is when I started to see all of this come out to be uncontrollable. And when I knew it wasn't terrible twos, obviously, anymore. So he was five and a half. So is that usually the time you start seeing this? Yeah, five, six, uh, not uncommonly when school begins and there are more responsibilities that the child has to fulfill. But again, Suzanne's story is so typical because oftentimes the parent misinterprets this as saying, well, I'm just a bad parent. And, that, and as a result, Jocelyn, they don't get the help that they need because they're afraid that they're the reason, they're the problem. These are brain-based problems every bit as much as ADHD and other kinds of learning difficulties. But parents misinterpret it, and as a result, fortunately, Suzanne got help in a timely fashion, but sometimes we won't see parents until the child's 10, 11, 12, and these behavioral patterns are so firmly entrenched that it's ripping up the entire family. Is it too late at that point, or is it treatment still okay? It's still okay, but again, the sooner the better. If, if a parent suspects that they have a child with ODD, the sooner they get help, the better. All right, what kind of help is out there? Well, there are several kinds of things that we do, at least at our clinic. First, we want to equip parents with the skills that they need to engineer that household differently. Children with ODD are what I call WIFM kids. What's in it for me? Mm -hmm. So that if you can make it very clear why it's in that child's best interest to comply with your wishes, they'll do it. But too often we tell our, our kids, well, do it because I said so. And with an ODD kid, them's fighting words. And that's when you see these meltdowns, and that's when you see these kinds of behavioral tantrums go on. So we teach parents how to manage those situations, engineer them so that there's much more likelihood of compliance. In addition, as you know from past encounters with us, we do a lot of neurofeedback training. And what that is, is it's a computer-based training that actually uses computers to teach the child to become more flexible.
We actually have some video right now. Excellent. So what you're seeing in the video is the neurofeedback training in which we actually train the child's brain so that the child learns to manage his own brain. Because when a child who has ODD melts down, his brain is taken over. He needs to be in control of his brain, and the neurofeedback is what teaches him how to do that. So that, in conjunction with working with the parents, makes for a much more successful outcome. All right. How long has it been? Has he been treated, Suzanne? Um, I believe we started going to see the Reynolds Clinic in March, um, and he started neurofeedback in about the end of May and finished the beginning of August. How's he doing now? Fantastic. <laughs> So it's almost like a different kid, the kid that I know that he is. Um, we still have day-to-day -day struggles, but they're the usual day-to-day -day struggles that you would expect with a child without ODD. Um, yeah. It's manageable and it's great. As Dr. Reynolds says, he worked with you yes. so that you could work with your son at home. Yes. What are you doing differently? Um, well, I, he gave me a plan um, to put in place at home and we follow that. Um, I've stopped raising my voice. Um, I've stopped getting angry and walking out of the room. I'm able to deal with it because I know what's expected of me. I know what I need to do to make him a, to make him better, to make him feel okay in the home, and it's great. But he's lucky to have such a loving mom, too, to really <laughs> care. One of the ruts that parents get into sometimes, Jocelyn, with a child who has ODD, is they end up punishing the child. The problem with children who have ODD is punishment really doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, they punish them more. And when that doesn't work, they punish them more. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of alienation and no success. So parents are raising their voices, they're yelling, the whole situation is out of control. And with a child with ODD, if all you have is punishment in your toolkit, you're going to have a very difficult time. All right, for more information, people can go to an open house that you're holding. Actually, you have two yes, open two. houses free. Mm -hmm. The first one is Wednesday, November 2nd from 6.30 to 8.30. Then Saturday, November 5th from 9 a.m. to noon. You say pre-registration is required. Yes. They can call that number on the screen, 860-343-0227. Or you can also go online and log on to ReynoldsClinic.com. And of course, if you want more information, contact ReynoldsClinic.com. It's great to have you both with us. Thank you for sharing your story with us, Suzanne. Oh, you're welcome.